Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. Tonight we are going to be taking a look at the Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade game. But first, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Now again, what I'm going to be doing today is cracking open a shiny new in shrink copy of Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade a deck building competitive deck building card game based on the extremely popular cowboy bebop anime note the anime not the netflix series this game actually predates the netflix series though you'll recognize characters from both so there's no reason if you haven't seen the anime i don't think it's going to impact anything but i honestly think the big draw for this is going to be cowboy bebop fans now i do have to thank japan anime gains for sending me a review copy of this game that I am really looking forward to checking out. So this is a deck building game for one to four players. Note, you can play solo. At game time, half an hour to an hour, depending on the number of players and how familiar they are with the game. Um, it is listed at age 14 plus, which I can kind of see with some of the themes in Cowboy Bebop. And I honestly don't know how much they're going to come out on the card. Um, especially Faye Valentine being overly sexualized. I don't know if that's going to be on the cards or not. So that might be a pretty um, accurate age. Now, this does have five miniatures, which actually look really sweet, that are just used to show what planet you're on. But they do have a gameplay effect. Note, this is not a miniature game. It just has some miniatures. So let's get to it. We're going to crack this open, take a look at what's in the box. It's way more than just cards. So I'm looking forward to seeing this for the first time with you. All right, here we have the box for Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. Got to say, if you know the anime, you're going to recognize that cover right away. Definitely going with the aesthetic of the show. All right, right on top. I dig it. I always like, I have a thing for themed rule books that don't just say, you know, here, learn to play the game. Cute. So it's the Big Shot Guide for Bounty Hunters. Um, this manual is brought to you by Big Shot, which is, of course, the TV show where they list bounties. Uh, we are looking at a game overview, giving the game play, and they even have the characters from the show kind of, you know, introducing you to the rules, um, how a deck builder works. So I like that. They basically give you an overview of how deck building works. This is a pretty traditional deck builder where you are going to have a starting deck. You're going to draw a hand of five cards. You're going to do your actions. And when you run out of cards in your draw deck, you reshuffle and draw again. In this particular game, there are standard cards that all the characters have, as well as character specific cards. This is a quick look at the card design, but we'll be seeing those later. Uh, rule books, nice big text. I dig that. You are looking at four different resources in this game. So there's four different things you're trying to collect to do stuff. There, there are Wulungs, which is the money in Cowboy Bebop, which is used to buy more cards. Fuel, which is needed to power special abilities and move between planets. Strength, which is used to defeat bounties. And Clues, which is an alternate way to defeat bounties where you're going to outsmart them instead of defeating them. Um, we also have various bounty cards, which we'll see later, as well as there'll be planets that we can move to. So you can kind of see the basic layout where you have the Bebop surrounded by planets. Uh, setup looks very clear here. It tells you the number of players, how the player boards and decks work. Here's the different effects. Um, one of the things this game does feature is similar to games like Star Realms, where you can combo cards. But the interesting thing I found in this compared to that was that they don't match the color. So like, it's not like every blue card you play combos off you'll play a blue card that says if you've also played a purple, something happens. And what those are actually tied to is the different characters from the series. So even when playing with less than four characters, you still have the miniatures out for the other characters because you can still combo off them, which I thought was interesting. Um, There's a whole thing about purchasing cards, flying around, confronting criminals. Um, Not a hugely thick rule book, but there's enough going on here that this we're looking at a good 16 pages, 15 pages. Even more than that, once you get into the individual character abilities. So we're looking at an 18-page book without the solo variant, which isn't bad. Now, one of the things that is an important part of this game is eventually you will be battling against Vicious, which would fit both of the series. You got their various random character abilities and so on. Nice rule summary on the back of the book here. And again, I dig the thematic beat-up Old West look. Next, we have counters. We have all kinds of counters for various different things in the game. So we have counters here. It's just one punch board. Then we get to, this is where you put some of the decks off to the side. It uh, looks like the Bebop might actually be 3D. Oh, the Big Shot. That's cool. I didn't realize this. So some of the cards are actually going to be standing up. 
Um, obviously, it came with standees originally, but I know there are miniatures in this, so I have a feeling that might have been a Kickstarter bonus at some point. But note, the retail copy does come with the miniatures, so I have a feeling that before the Kickstarter, they were not going to be. Um, then we get to the different planets, and what I will note here, it's kind of, can you see that? That is a double-layered board. So right in here, you're going to put a cube that marks how much fuel it takes to get to this planet. If it gets to the final, the, the villain is going to escape. So you have the different planets you're going to. Note they're not named, but if you've seen the show, you might know which planets they represent. So there are three different planets to travel to, and that's a spot to put your target, your bounty on. Then we have the Bebop, and what's, all it's noting here is to come back to the Bebop only ever takes one fuel. Then we have the player boards, which again are dual layered because over here you are going to track your fuel with a cube. So there's actually something in there. So I got to say big bonus for dual layer player boards, kind of trying to show that off. So of course you have the, the four main characters of the show, Radical Edward. Um, and then this is their special ability. So Radical Edward can use fuel to get clues and they can actually, if they have enough fuel, they can draw a card from their discard into their hand. I'm not going to get into all the character abilities, but it does list all four of the character abilities because again... If you're on the same spot as another character, you can use their ability. So that's kind of a neat thing going on in this game. So then you have Faye, you have Jet Black, and of course, Spike Spiegel. Um, we have various spots to put things, little cubes. I, it, oddly, it seems like there's way more room for stuff than I have stuff. So I don't know if those are some Kickstarter exclusives or possible stuff that'll come for expansions. Then we get to the, the cards, but you know what? Let's show off the miniatures here. So, of course, the first figure we have is Spike Spiegel. I gotta say, I dig the style of this. Looks like the character of the game has the extra tall, lanky look. Moving on to Jet Black. The crossed arms pistol. I gotta say, these are really nice sculpts. Really impressed by that. Radical Edward, which, of course, also has Ein, the doggy. Looking just as silly as Ed always does. Then Faye Valentine. And finally, your villain, Vicious. Like, look at that mini. That is a great looking miniature for a game that really doesn't need them. It's a nice bonus. So there you have your miniatures. The only thing we have left to look at is the cards. I'm gonna do a quick, no, nope, nothing under the box insert. Always worth checking, you never know. So I'm gonna actually put this off to the side a bit and we're gonna stack these here. Okay, here are our different decks of cards. So the big shot cards here should be a smaller amount of these. These will be your bounties. So these are the characters you're gonna be hunting down. I know this isn't, there's no uh, like a legacy aspect, so I'm not spoiling anything here, but you will recognize these if you are a fan of the show. We have, of course, Teddy Bomber, uh, which does tell you what the different planets are. So there you go. Um, so Teddy ha starts with two tokens on being defeated by combat and two tokens on defeat by clues. But the thing is, to remove a token, you need to do one damage to remove those tokens or two clues. So it's actually more difficult to defeat him with clues than it is with uh, combat. Now, the thing is, when you do this, you're going to collect little tokens off here, which those were the tokens on the punch board, and they're going to give you points. Now, the person that defeats Teddy, though, is going to get a bonus. Though, there are some starter ones, and Teddy is actually worth zero, because he's an easy bounty. And then we have the MPU, which, again, is way more difficult. See, you need three clues, but you only have to do it once, whereas combat, you just have to do two combat, and it's going to go through. So, the starter villains um, are all worth zero points, but then they start becoming more difficult, and they're worth more points. They also sometimes have abilities where they clear the market before going through. So you have a whole ton of characters all from the Bebop cartoon. Going all the way up to, of course, Vicious. Vicious, of course, has a set of special rules and is more difficult to defeat based on the number of people playing. So he can be extremely difficult, needing a maximum of 13 damage to defeat or seven clues. But note it's three per clue, so 21 Clue resources would have to be spent to capture Vicious, as opposed to 13 combat done to Vicious. So there we have our starting characters now. What's interesting with Vicious, you'll know he doesn't have a starting planet. He moves around. The other bounties stay on a planet until they either escape or are captured. 
So I don't want to mix these cards up in case the starter cards are in here. It looks like they're grouped by character. So each card is color coded based on on the character that it, it's associated with. But similar to like the DC deck building game, just because you're playing Spike doesn't mean you can't buy Ein cards or Fey cards or Radical Edward cards or Jet cards. Now, what you will see is the combos on the bottom. So this is a Radical Edward card. Cost to buy the cards at the bottom. The resource it provides here. So this particular card provides three. And then there's the card text. Here's a different card that costs two to buy. It gives you two money. And it lets you, it looks like, move. You can move the fuel gauge plus or minus on a planet and so on. Uh, artwork here is fantastic. Obviously, right from the show, there's some duplications, but it's the same card, right? So there's multiple copies of some of the cards. Um, these, again, might be starter cards. I just don't want to mix these up in case. So again, this produces two fuel and a money, but it costs three to buy. We're going to flip through some of these just to show them off. Artwork's great, but what do you expect, right? They had a great anime to pull the artwork from. So here's an example of the combo. So what this would be is if you play this card and an Edward card at the same time, you would get this additional bonus. So when playing this card, you would get two resources. If you have two or less fuel, you can move for free. And then if you also played a Radical Edward card that turn, you would get, earn a clue. And it goes on. We're going to flip through these really quickly because there's no good reason to take our time going through them. I have to assume the characters are fairly asymmetric, but I don't know that because I haven't actually played the game yet. And again, these were on top. So again, I don't want to mix them up. I know there are some generic cards, which I haven't seen yet. Oh, okay. So here are the wound cards. Wounds are here. Here we go. These are the generic cards. These go in the starter deck that are just for a few Wulongs. It gives you one money. You can pay money to remove the card from your deck. You'll note they're not associated with any particular character. So there's a whole bunch of those because these are starter cards that everyone gets. I can't remember how many in each deck. And then these should be the starter cards for Spike. So he would have these four cards in his deck. And you'll note it says B in the corner for basic. So that's Spike's basic cards. And let's see. Let's see if they're different. Here are Spike's basic cards. Little discovery happened here. Spike's basic cards provide you with one money, one money and a clue, two fuel, one fuel in a fight. Whereas Ed's looks the same. So it doesn't look like the starter decks are actually asymmetric, except it'll matter because of the combo system, right? So th these cards will only combo with blues and those will combo with reds. So that's interesting to know. You know me, I would have preferred asymmetry there on the basic abilities, but I get it. And then again, so same deal, right? When you play this card, it doesn't matter if you're Ed or not, but if you play it with a Faye Valentine card, you'll get a bonus. There you have it. I'm going to keep these a little separate because these obviously go here. These are the starter cards. Um, now, finally, every time you do decide to attack opponent with combat, you have to draw one of these wound cards. These are your typical punitive cards that do bad things in your deck. What I like is it's not one thing. Like There's a variety of different types of wounds that are going to cause different effects. So it's not like they're just worth minus one point at the end of the game. And then bunch of them like this one called close one when it comes up it sucks because you can't use it but you just discard it right away whereas let's grab this one down here that says bed rest put this card on top of your deck you'd have to pay a buck so this one's just going to keep coming up into your hand turn after turn after turn until you pay for it so i like that there's a random wound system that's a nice touch for a deck builder that's it that's what you get with cowboy bebop space serenade a, co a competitive deck building game so now that I have these separated, I am going to put them in their own little separate deck slots. Which I gotta say, for sleevers, it definitely looks like there's plenty of room to sleeve your cards here. Actually, that fits rather nice. Um, we can put these here. Yeah, there's a spot for everything. That works. Again, cubes for tracking fuel. Not quite sure why there's some of these extra. It almost looks like dice belong in there, but who knows? I do know this game was kickstarted. This is not the Kickstarter edition, and that could be the only reason I'm seeing lots of extra room. So yes, I was talking about collecting those symbols. These are the different symbols that you would collect, and these are just track three points. Ta-da! 
Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade, Japanime Games, Sunrise Games, and Don't Panic Games. All right, so that's everything you get in a copy of Cowboy Bebop. The song's running through my head. I wish I could play it for you right now so it could all be in your heads as an earworm as well. Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade, a competitive deck building game where you're four different space cowboys out hunting bounties, eventually trying to capture Vicious. Uh, it's a pretty traditional deck builder with some cool elements like multiple resources, unique player abilities, and moving around a map while also trying to defeat people. It reminds me of a mashup of other popular deck builders that I really enjoy. I am really looking forward to checking this out. I'm a big Bebop fan. I'll admit a new Bebop fan. I did not watch this one growing up. It's once the Netflix series was announced that I finally watched the, um, the, the anime and then watched the other series and fell in love, as many, many fans have over the years. I am really looking forward to checking this one out. And I'll be sharing my thoughts on this over at TabletopBellhop.com once I do get it played. You can also follow me on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram, where I'll be sharing pictures of the game and talking about it as I try it out. Other than that, um, thank you for joining me tonight. If you did enjoy the show, we do have a Patreon, tabletop, or patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. It'd be awesome if you consider tipping your bellhop. And in the meantime, you can always hit that like, follow, subscribe, ding the bell, all those awesome things you can do to tell the social media gods to pay attention to us so they can share our content with more people. That'd be greatly appreciated. That's it for this unboxing video. Good night and game on.